G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I've just decided to turn the camera on and start chatting to you because I've had quite an eventful week. Not really, but there are some things I just wanted to chat about and I feel like I'm going to uh, play on screen. I hope I am doing this because this is my plan. My plan at the moment is to get in my journal and do a whole bunch of like stamping, concept stamping and like get my paints out and kind of go crazy with paint, maybe some collage with Collage Club. I'm not quite sure. Um, but something very painterly and fun and very... I just want to get my stamps out and play with them because I've got so many and I just want to have a ball kind of figuring that out. So hopefully that's what you're seeing on the screen. If not, I've completely changed my mind and hopefully you enjoy whatever it is you do see that accompanies this voiceover, which I, I'm just going to talk about the last week that I've had. So I think the last time I checked in with you actually wasn't even that long ago, Collage Club. But I know a lot of people watch those videos because you wouldn't really watch it unless you were in Collage Club. I mean, some people do. And they literally do, because there's more views than there are people in College Club, unless people are watching it twice. Um, I couldn't see why, but uh, yeah, it's just those videos I do every month just to go through each of the sheets. And I like to say where some of the stuff comes from, or like give a bit of a back story to some of the things that might be a little bit more obscure or a bit more random. Especially this month, like things like that Mean Girls type journal like, it's like Mean Girls meets journaling. Like, that's just kind of a weird thing that people might think, why did he put that in there? So I just wanted to explain some of it and, like, talk about little details. Some things I do specifically with Collage Club in mind. Like, I think these are fun things I want to do for my own journals, and I think a theme of this page would be really fun to add. And then other things I put into Collage Club just because I've done them throughout the month, like those fairies I did, <coughs> excuse me, inspired by my Grand's coloring book. Those I just did, you know, in my own personal journaling thing, and I felt like, well, I want to add those. And then other things are just from the archive, like they're just things I've scanned at one point, you know, five years ago from something that I did. I have so many journals, I was about to point to them, those are not journals, <laughs> those, are, those are reference books, those are lots of art books and things I look at to be inspired by, but the, um, the journals are just so full of stuff, and you know, I go through them every now and again, I do a whole big scan, I take a lot of photos of things, and then I put them together into these sort of themed pages. Uh, why am I talking about Collage Club? That is what those, <laughs> that's what those videos are, if you're ever wondering, uh, and why I make those. It's for Collage Club. It's over on Teachable, you can go find everything you need to know over there. Uh, but I was quite busy with that, because towards the end of the month, I'm usually kind of putting it all together. It's a lot of formatting. Most of the art is kind of done by that point, or collected by that point. But the last kind of, I would say four or five days, just becomes about formatting. I clean up absolutely everything all around the edges. I have missed a few things over the years. It's been like, this is our fourth year of Collage Club, I think. We've done 21, 22, 23. Uh, so we're in our fourth year. Um, there's absolutely been times where I've missed a spot or two. And you know what? I, it comes up when I make the cut the cut files for Silhouette, which are just a bonus. I know I've put them in almost every month. I think I have put them in every month since we've started, but just so you know, there's just still a bonus. <laughs> Never guaranteed, but I always do them. Uh, maybe I should just make them part of it. Uh, the I find out then, because to be able to make all the cut lines, I have this like threshold slider and it picks up on all the pixels on the page. And then sometimes I see like just a whole bunch of things that are just, I forgot to erase or forgot to clean up. Sometimes I go back and do it if it's, uh, if I haven't finished it already. And then other times if it's not too offensive, it's, it's just a random little dot in the page somewhere that isn't next to anything, it might make it in there. But Collage Club is a lot of formatting. I think I've made a video on here before, putting a month together or doing something for Collage Club and showing how it comes together. I always find that stuff fascinating because uh, I'm just weird like that. I like to see the behind the scenes of things, but it is just a lot of computer work. So towards the end of the month, if you ever find me kind of disappearing from social media or getting a lot more weird about my posting and procrastinating a lot, <laughs> it's because I'm on the computer and I just hate being on the computer. I don't hate it, beyond a point. Beyond a point, I do hate it. But like for the first hour or so, I think I'm fine. And then I get really restless, really crazy. I spend too much time in my own brain, have to go and do something. So that is that. My heart goes out to anyone who works in an office and has to deal with a computer. I don't know how you do it. The Collage Club is done for February. I was really happy to put that out and get that out right on midnight on the 1st. So hopefully you've got that. And then... Oh, before all of that happened, actually, last Saturday, I 
started my new show over at Knott's Berry Farm. It is the Peanuts. Knott's is having the Peanuts Celebration right now. It's called Knott's Peanut Celebration. Um, they have seasons of fun at Knott's Berry Farm. So you've got... Uh, last year I started working in Scary Farm, so their haunt season, the Halloween season. They have like a summer of fun, I think. Uh, they have the Christmas season. They have the Knott's... Uh, celebration season that's the this one we're in right now at the start of the year the next one i think is the boysenberry festival uh that kind of is like the spring and i'm at this point scheduled to do another show over there for that so i'm gonna be over at knott's berry farm quite a bit in these first few months but we just started we had some rehearsals beforehand uh for a couple of weeks and then we opened last Saturday, so that was really, really fun. If you've been on my Instagram, I was sharing photos from there. I have videos to share as well, but I think I'll spread it out. You know, I don't like to spam your Instagram. <laughs> That's a lie, I do. I was gonna post it all on one day, but I thought, you know what, I'll wait till next week, because I'm sure we'll be all excited to post it again over the weekend. So we opened that. Um, yes, I was on a microphone, and I will stay on a microphone, apparently, until the end of the show. Uh, it was... It's it happened. I'm not even gonna go into it all because it's it's just so funny to me. I'm not against singing. Like I don't have. I'm not like I don't hate singing. I just don't think. Like I don't train in singing. I'm a dancer. Like I'm a trained dancer. Police have come to get me for singing. Bianca, hello. Can you hear the cat? Everything's happening right now. And I'm gonna sneeze. Uh oh. Here we go. We're gonna go into. Did <coughs> you? allergy portion of this video excuse me sorry it's gonna be what it is the i don't have a thing against singing i'm just a trained dancer so i have this really big uh imposter syndrome when it comes to singing and rightfully so because like i said i'm not trained i used to do singing when i was a kid and then i actually did more singing than i did dancing back then or i very much felt like i was equally a singer and a dancer but then my voice broke and i just never really sang after that i don't feel like i can't sing I am not a singer, <laughs> but I don't think I sound so bad, but I also don't think I sound good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm making this make sense. All of that to say, it wasn't really my choice whether we got to be on microphone or not, and um, I did secretly have my fingers crossed that they wouldn't pick me to be on microphone, but for whatever reason, it happened. I'm being pushed into a new uh, journey where I'm going to have to, I mean, I already have. I've accepted it. I'm going to mic checks. I'm doing my little song. I'm up there like Mariah Carey. I do love the little headset. I love that it looks very Britney Spears, but it's just a whole new world. Like dancing with the mic pack on, I've not ever had to worry about when I'm dancing, what my face was really doing. Cause I could, like every time I turned around, I could kind of fix my face and like cough a little bit or, you know, take a really big <gasps> breath if I needed to while I'm dancing. This is not that, like your microphone. And even though we're just a part of the ensemble, like it's just, you can kind of hear us singing along with the track in the background is what I'll say. So it's not offensive. I'm not really ruining the show with my voice, <laughs> which I know is what I was making it out to be. I was being very dramatic. Can't I just be dramatic? The, um, <laughs> the thing that I'm not used to is, is that like having to manage now how that impacts my dancing. Cause it's just a lot easier just to dance without having to worry about what you're sounding like. So that's been really interesting. Also when I get off stage and I feel like I want to speak, i nervous that my microphone is still on like still feeding through the audience so even being quiet backstage is very weird for me like I usually get off stage and start screaming and then <laughs> like every number I don't know it's just been an interesting experience it was dry as well like I didn't I've never I've, I've had to worry about this before I've done uh performances outside where if the air is really cold or the atmosphere is really dry it just sucks all the moisture out of your your throat and you're literally like <laughs> trying to get through the whole thing so that I've had to deal with before, but it was hard enough just dancing. Then to sing through that was like, I don't even know how you do it. There was no sound coming out. Like it was just, sometimes it was just air. Like those nightmares that people have where they go to sing and no voice comes out. It was just like that. Anyway, it has actually been really fun. So I'm not going to complain about it. Um, I was just very nervous because it's something I'm not used to. And I just felt very like, this is not me. And I don't need to be pushing myself at this light stage in my life. But you know what? I think a challenge is quite good for me. And now I'm going to put on my resume that I'm a singer dancer. So watch out world. Here I come. <laughs> Although I never want to have to sing in an audition. <laughs> I'll be the singer if we get there and you put me on a microphone and it's really low and it's in the background and you can't really hear me. There you go. That's the type of show I'm looking for as a singer dancer. 
but I'm just happy to dance. Um, so anyway, that was really fun. The show itself is really cute. It's called It's Your Life, Charlie Brown, and it has a whole host of the Peanuts gang in it. And it is about, it's kind of like uh, This Is Your Life. Do you remember that show where they have the big book and they get a celebrity and they go through their life? It's like that, but we're doing it for Charlie Brown and his life. So it was really cute, and all of the performance numbers are kind of high energy and very, very cute. It's very much like Hairspray, where, you know, we're called the Martinets, and we look like uh, a troop of, like, TV show performers from the 60s. It's just so cute. I love it. I love, love, love it. But it only runs until the end of February, so make sure you... Uh, get down to Knott's Berry Farm if you do want to see it. And it's mostly on the weekends. It's not throughout the week. We have some Friday, Monday shows, but yeah, it's going to be over before we know it. So I'll put it on Instagram just so you can see. And I'll uh, leave you with that. That was, sorry, my nose is going again. Part two of the allergies. It's a lot better today. The weather is gorgeous. Um, but it is allergy season. I get... I don't get self-conscious. I get annoyed. I get annoyed at my own allergies on the screen because on the screen, huh? on the videos, because I don't like the way my voice sounds when I start to get congested and nasally. But I mean, I don't watch the videos back that often, so it doesn't matter to me. I guess it's your problem now. Sorry. Uh, you'll go if it's too much, I'm sure. There was a girl I used to watch on YouTube, but her voice was very nasal. And then I, in the beginning, it didn't really bother me, but then after a while, it just got too much, so I took a break from her. And I always feel bad, because I'm like, she's so talented, and I really did enjoy her content, but sometimes you just can't get over what you can't get over. It's like, if someone does videos and there's, like, weird eating sounds or something, I, I just cannot, no matter how much I like you, I cannot listen to you eat. So, that's a whole thing I have an issue with. I think it's called misophonia. I've not been diagnosed, but I do have a terrible terrible visceral reaction to hearing people eat <laughs> oh poor steve the um i think we've traced it back to my grand's father so what would that make my great grandfather that's as far back as i heard anyway he hated the, the sound of people eating so much so that my grand used to eat chips by putting like the potato chips she would put it on her tongue and let it dissolve and then eat it. So it made absolutely no sound. No crunchy, crunchy chip sounds. Just put it on the tongue, let it, like a communion wafer. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a very strong memory I have of that. But they didn't have any issues like that. No, no one else in my family feels like that. So I think it skipped all those generations, came right down to me. I have to say I'm much better than I was, but that I have a friend who, bless him, we were roommates at one point and <laughs> felt so bad. He, it wasn't even like a terrible thing and he had every right to eat his apple in peace, but I could just hear it and it, I just couldn't stand it any longer. And I like very, very inappropriately had an outburst about it. So apologies to him all these years later. He's not watching this, but if you are, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was apologetic when I did that as well, but yeah, I, I just can't stand it. Sorry. Which is so crazy because there's YouTube videos that I watch and I'm not going to go into it where there's totally eating sounds. But it's, I think it's different when I know I'm heading myself into it and I can turn it off at any point. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, if I have control over that, it's different. I don't know, but where is this conversation going? Both the cats are great, in case you were wondering. Uh, Bianca's being a lot more social these days. She's turning 13. I think she's 13 this year. Oliver is 7. I can't believe they're so big. Bianca is like a little old lady now. I mean, she's fine. She's exactly the way that she is, but she's got a lot more gray in her muzzle. <clears throat> and her whiskers are white. And she's being much more affectionate, which uh, let's not go there, but obviously gives me a, like a few sad thoughts about what might be happening, uh, which it's 13. She's way too young, but she's being a lot more affectionate. So I really like that. She's out and about in the house, which is crazy because usually once we take Christmas down, she's nowhere to be found. She loves Christmas. And then the rest of the year she's in hiding, but she's, uh, yeah, she's been out and about. Oliver is still a mess and running over the desk. Excuse me. Ah, that's why I started talking about it because he's over here. Can you just be nice? Come here. Say hello. Come here. She's not going to come. You won't do anything I want you to do. I'm going to grab him. Come here, say hello. Here he is, look, Oliver's here. <laughs> Hi. He hates it. Bye. Be good. 
they're shedding like crazy. Between the allergies of the, the air and then these cats, I'm really going through it. Um, anyway, so what else is on the agenda? Not much, actually. I'm taking it really slow for this past week and next week. I'm taking it as kind of like a holiday. I mean, I really don't deserve one, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's like a slightly working holiday. I'm taking all the downtime I can get and not being guilty for anything else. Because once I did my taxes, um, I mean, I haven't done this like the full year taxes. I mean, like the quarterly stuff that I deal with. And then my sales taxes I filed. Once I did those, I felt like, all right, my responsibilities have been managed. I can go and take like two weeks to just be chill, especially because I'm going into a lot of dancing and there's a lot of, there's two different schedules I'm balancing over at Knott's Berry Farm and at Disneyland and they both butt up right next to each other. Like I go from one job straight into the next one and I'll be gone for like the entire day. So I feel like before that all happens, I don't want to be worn out before that. So have my little rest before then and then be ready for that little season and all of that really kicks off in about three weeks so I think this is kind of like the last little point I can just have some downtime I am thinking about the courses that I want to do uh, I think in the summer I want to do a virtual voyage workshop and then towards the Halloween season I think I want to do another uh, virtual voyage workshop then I do have an idea or a hope for doing a standalone uh, art journaling workshop that isn't virtual voyage doesn't have those live components as well but uh, jury's out on that one because those ones I just like to be a certain way um, and they're all kind of different from each other so it's kind of weird to say that but in my head they have to make sense as a standalone product and my idea for it right now is not <laughs> is not right for that so I'll be focusing on collage club for now as far as like content you can expect to see from me um, collage club I do have a collaboration <clears throat> that I want to reach out to someone to do but I'm just still I'm still unsure about what I want to contribute to it. Like, that's the thing. I, I have every idea for what the person I want to ask could contribute to it. <laughs> but it's my own contribution that I feel like I'm not meeting the standard. So I'll uh, I'll have to figure that out. Um, that's not something that's time sensitive, but that would be something I'd like to do product wise this year. Um, I'm not really looking to get into making any new washi tape anytime soon, but we do have a pretty good stock of stamps on hand. Uh, and most of the washi tape, I think, is sold out at this point. So uh, it, it'll be stamps in my Etsy store for a while, as well as the Collage Club stuff. Um, yeah, workshops and YouTube content. I am planning to keep my Friday upload schedule. And again, it's very varied over here. It's whatever I end up doing throughout the week. And I like to switch it up a bit. I don't like to because I was going to do another five year Hobonichi video and I know there'll be people that'll be like, no, I would have watched that. I really like that. I totally get it. But there's just something about my brain that doesn't want the, it to be too repetitive. So I'm not saying that you won't get another video like that, but it, I don't want it too close to the other one. So I don't know. I don't know what, like, <laughs> what goes in my head when I think about what YouTube video. I literally turned this on today and was like, well, whatever I do will happen, which is true. That's how I feel about it. But there are certain things I do want to show you as well. That I have to be a bit more, uh, you know, planned out about. Um, live streaming, I think that's something I would like to get back into, especially with my schedule changing. Um, I think that's something that I would want to do back on Instagram Live. I like how casual that is. I'm not really looking to save the live streams for replay. Uh, you know, every now and again, I used to do that and put it on my website, but I haven't been on that website for ages. And I just got an email saying they're going to renew that domain. So I should probably go and use it. There's some good stuff on there, but I was just using it really to back catalog my uh, live streams. Also to do like blog posts that were too hard to do anywhere else that didn't have a landing anywhere else. So there's some good blog posts on there. Specifically the one I lead a lot of people to is what is Virtual Voyage because that kind of explains the whole thing. But if you've seen it or you know it, you don't need to see that. I think I did, didn't I do a whole year in my planner spreads on there too? <laughs> I either planned to do that and never did it or I did it. I'm pretty sure I did it. Um, things like that. I think that's so fascinating. Does anyone else have a website like that where they just kind of, you know, lay out their entire journal on there? I want to see that. Please leave that in the comments below if you know a website. An art journalist website that I should go check out. I'm not really looking to join a, a subscription or anything, like a club. Like, I, if, if it's all behind a paywall, I, I don't really want to join that. Um, no offense to anybody. But if someone's just got, like, a really fun art journaler blog, please link that. I would love to 
get lost on that over the weekend. But yeah, I have a whole weekend of shows over at Knott's Berry Farm. Two fingers crossed it doesn't rain. It's so funny, I work with a lot of people that like really wish for it to rain sometimes so that they don't have to do the performances, but I'm just so... I just want to do them so badly. <laughs> it's like the end of the world if it's going to be cancelled. I, I was like, Steve, it could rain up until you know, like the morning of, and then just let it break enough for me to do the shows and then just rain all the rest of the night. I don't care. Um, while everyone else is wishing that it would rain so that their shifts would get cancelled. <laughs> not here, not at this, um, not at this show that I'm in. Let's just say in the past I've had these experiences, but couldn't be me. I love doing it. I love doing it so much and I won't take any of it for granted, especially because I'm feeling very like fit right now. I'm feeling like I'm handling it all. I'm fitting into the costume, which is nice. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just really feeling it. I'm really having a good time. I think all these years ago, I don't know if I, um, I think I said this in that video that I posted, but I can't remember if I did or not. So if I didn't, I'll just use this as my closing kind of little anecdote, I guess. When I stopped dancing in 2015 and all those years that I tried to go back to dancing, I had a very interesting like specific idea about what it would look like when I went back to dancing. I didn't share that a lot because it was actually just kind of too painful to imagine that that that's what I was working towards and it wasn't happening. Like I a lot of the time I had to be in a bit of denial about it because I just it was too depressing a thought and especially because it was so real. Like I'd spent seven years living this experience and then it just stopped and like I knew exactly what I was missing out on. It wasn't a fantasy or a dream. It was like no I, I know exactly what that life is. I know how that felt, I know what that was, I know how I felt in that, and I just, I want that. So when I was picturing going back to performing, I had an idea that it would just look like that again. Maybe it was really naive of me to think it would just kind of snap back into place, but I'd never known any different. So I, I didn't know what it was like to dance part-time either. Like I'd only ever done contracts. So I didn't even know what it was like to clock in for work and then clock out and go home and live your life. Like that was weird too. I, I lived these dance contracts. I wasn't clocking out of them. On ships, it was every single day you were living on that ship or in Japan, it was you're living in Japan. And that's the whole experience was, was wrapped up in this dance contract. So I thought when I went back, that's what would happen even though I knew going to Disneyland was like a part-time job, like I wouldn't be there every day. Um, you know, I'd, 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 I would clock in in the afternoon, I'd clock out at night and I'd go home and do my JLB creative stuff. Like that was something I'd never balanced both of those before. So it wasn't, it wasn't like bad. I was really, 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 really happy, but I was just getting used to how all of that felt like, it was new. It wasn't actually something that I had lived before. And even though I was enjoying being back dancing and performing again, I was still trying to juggle, okay, how do I, how do I make this feel like it did before? Like, how do I absorb myself back into this dancing when I'm not there all the time? Or like, how do I, yeah, how do I kind of get more of that? And I also wasn't interested in, like, giving up JLB Creative as well. Like, I didn't want to give up my business just so I could pretend that I was a full-time dancer again. But internally, I had this expectation that it would all feel the same. And I was so happy for that really short season. But then once uh, our once I finished performing in February, I think it was, uh, of 2023, I didn't have anything to do for months and months and months and months. And that was so depressing. And I remember talking to my patrons about it when we were doing Playtest Patreon 3. And I was trying to handle it because I didn't want to be in, you know, the depths of despair again, but it was feeling so, I felt so upset about it because I just did not imagine that even though it felt different and I was happy about that and I was figuring it all out, I had never in my wildest expectations imagined that it would stop again. And when it did and I wasn't ready for that and it was just so against all expectations, it just felt so heavy and it felt so depressing. And I was very, very much struggling with that. And I mean, I don't even think I made too much of a secret of the struggle. I was trying to be optimistic and trying to be hopeful about what I knew would happen in the future because I knew it would just be a period. I was like, and I'm not going to let this be too long. I will do whatever I need to do to get back on track and to make you know some of these opportunities happen. It is one of those things where it's kind of the luck of the draw sometimes. You know, you can't 
like as a dancer, you can't really choose your jobs. They have to choose. You can choose to go, but then they have to choose you, and then you have to accept. So, it's a it's a weird industry because you don't really get a ton of choice in it. You know, take that for what you will as a statement. But after all of that, you know, and then going back, I, I really felt like I'd started again. All of those little special events aside, I feel like I'd started again around Halloween season when I went to Knott's Berry Farm. Oh, someone's calling. No. So then that was great because it all picked back up again. Excuse me. Just blow my nose. Who's calling me from Bakersfield? I get so much spam on this phone. Someone's given my phone number out to some spam company. It was probably me, but <laughs> um, I felt like I started again around Halloween and then I had Christmas time at Disneyland and then I went straight from Christmas into It's Your Life, Charlie Brown. And I'll go straight from It's Your Life, Charlie Brown into uh, Preserved and into... Uh, Disneyland's uh, offerings through Pixar Fest, like, I'm just so one after the other, after the other, after the other now, that that was what my expectation was. And so, that little blip aside in 2023, I think that's why I feel so happy, and I think that's why I feel so, uh, like, relieved and good right now, is because this feels most like I am meeting my expectations that I had for all those years, where... It wasn't something, it dance wasn't something that just came and went. And it wasn't something that I couldn't enjoy often. And it wasn't something that, you know, I actually feel like I'm doing it again. I feel like I'm doing it and it's constant and it's a part of my life. And even though there's that new aspect of it being kind of part time and me still having this uh, business and the, the responsibility of my own business, that is something that I'm actually finding a better balance for and I'm enjoying that as well. Um, I don't feel guilt for splitting time either way because I make choices about what I'm committing myself to and how it is all working out. So I really feel like I'm wherever I'm showing up, I'm showing up healthy and like the, the real like kind of the happiest, best version of myself that I've been in a really, really long time. Which is not to say that I was upset with myself before, but I just I'm feeling really on top. Like I feel like I'm really where I wanted to be and where I expected that I would be. And I'm not one to kind of fail to meet my own expectations. So this has felt like a very heavy burden for a while. So I'm very happy that I can say to my own brain, like, you did it, girl. Settle. <laughs> Take a break. Have a Kit Kat. <laughs> Is that too heavy to leave it on? All of that to say, yes. I'm feeling good because I feel like I've finally met my expectations. And that is a good feeling. And I've always told you in art journaling to lower the expectations <laughs> so that you can meet it quicker, which I do think is helpful in certain ways. Um, and to manage your expectations, I do still believe that. There are some things in life, and I think when it particularly relates to your dreams, like your 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 heart's desire, like my heart's desire to perform and to dance and to do those things, there are some expectations that you just can't put a restraint on. They're just going to be the biggest, most heartfelt wishes that you could think up. And it's really hard to rein those in. I think I, I think you're just supposed to chase after them and you're just supposed to do whatever you can until you get there. Because um, that's certainly uh, my experience. I feel like it's like, it's a weird thing. I've said before too, it's kind of a weird blessing and a curse. Like I know it is exactly, I know what it is like to achieve my dreams, but then I also know what it's like to not have them anymore. And then I know what it's like to want them again. And then I know what it's like to hack, to try and get them. And it was harder than the first time. Like it seemed so easy for me straight out of high school to achieve my dream. I was like, this is so easy. Why are people, why are people so mad about being an adult? It's great. <laughs> Everything's easy. But then doing it all over again and then spending seven years chasing after the exact same dream and it being so difficult, like, then I started to feel what it was like. You know, I have a lot of empathy for people that I didn't really understand before who were chasing after their dream, dreams kind of relentlessly and, and really pursuing it and putting a lot of effort into it and a lot of heartache into it. Um, so I have learned a lot through this experience. I'm never going to, you know, stop learning from it, I guess. Who knows what happens at the end of this year. I'm not going to hope for the worst. I will always hope for the best, but I'm very, very excited to kind of sit 
exactly in this moment and enjoy exactly what this is. Enjoy the anticipation of what could happen in the future, but then also enjoy primarily what I'm doing right now and not try to wish any of those hours away. I just want everything to slow down. I want to feel this for as long as I can feel this. It's so good. Okay, I gotta go because I'm actually gonna go and do the art section of this video, but hopefully you enjoyed that chat. I will speak to you again soon. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Until then, goodbye.